In this film, I'm going to recreate an 18th century agateware teapot in the Viennese collection. Agateware uses different colored clays to create a pattern that imitates agate stone. This particular type of laid agateware has to be press molded to maintain the pattern of the marbleized clay. To make the molds, it's necessary to investigate how the original model used for the molds was formed. My initial assumption is that it was sculpted to imitate a shell. I'll start by measuring the V&A's piece and increasing the scale taking account of the eventual shrinkage of the clay through drying and firing. I'm throwing a thick shape that can be marked, carved, and modeled into the main body of the teapot. I'll do the same for all the additional parts. The lid, the serpent spout, the dolphin handle, and the finial in the shape of a Chinese foo doll. The teapot has an oval form, so a leaf is cut out of the base and the sides are pushed together. I'm experimenting with how the form might have been originally made. After looking closely at the form of the original teapot, it seems that it may have been molded directly from a natural shell rather than being modeled. Following that insight, I'm cutting my thrown model in half to press into a mold from a natural shell. The shape, the size, and the number of lobes on the natural shell are very close to what I need for the teapot. I'm marking the cast shell with a compass so I can model it to recreate the exact shape I need. I've made plaster molds for each section of the teapot. Ornamental relief on the lid and the finial is carved directly into the plaster molds. A slab of colored clays needs to be created to press into the mold. This requires four different earthenwares. A manganese clay, a cobalt clay, an iron clay are layered with white earthenware to create the alternating layers. Layered slabs are turned into rolls and cut. The rolls are then assembled, alternating the colors and pounding into a solid block of clay. The block is sliced into layers and pressed into a thick slab between two sheets of paper to protect the patterning. A rolling pin is used to thin the slab. Based on my research, it became clear that the patterned slab of clay was sliced and then the slices alternated to create a new pattern. I'm carefully pressing the patterned slab into the shell teapot mold and trimming away the excess. I'm repeating that for the other parts. The edges are scored in preparation for joining the two halves of the mold together. A tool is used to seal the seams on the interior. Now that the clay is leather hard, I'm removing it from the mold. I'm going to clean the seams and assemble the sections to make the teapot. The clay is rolled into a tapered coil to make the handle.
The handle has additional embellishment. An incised plaster sprig mold is used to create the eyes of the dolphin. A brass roulette makes the pattern on the dolphin's back. I'm piercing the holes that will let the tea flow from the body of the teapot into the spout. I'll now leave the pot to dry before bisque firing. After the bisque firing, the teapot is dipped in glaze, which temporarily covers the pattern and reveals the form of the shell. When the glaze firing is complete, the final colors are revealed. Here you can see my teapot on the right with the 18th century Staffordshire original on the left.